Today is Thursday, August 18th, 2011, and I'm here with Jim and Vita. Good morning. Hi, David. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Vida, and this is Jim, and today we have the pleasure of talking to David Favor. And um, I wanted David to be our first speaker because when I was critically sick myself, I followed David's uh, guidance, and today I experienced the best well-being and health I've ever experienced. So I'm very thankful to David for that. So yeah. uh, remind me if it's all right, what was your health challenge to begin with, Vita? I uh, didn't even remember. Well, I had uh, precancer cells hmm. in my body, and That's they wanted right. me to do a uh, hysterectomy. And I decided not to do that. I remember that now. And so, uh, what? Uh, what? How long ago was that? That was six years ago. Wow, we've known each other six years. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Really? Wow. Yes. And so, the last time you went in for a checkup, what was the the um, uh, result of your checkup? Well, I'm fine now. So. You mean they didn't have to cut or burn that stuff out of you? No, I'm as good as new. <laughs> mm, funny thing. And you but, haven't even been to a doctor in, since then. Yeah, I. Uh, there has been no reason uh, to go to a doctor anymore. And even if I feel something that uh, I'm not doing well one day, I take care of it myself. I pay attention to my... Uh, uh, focus more on the diet and how I've been feeling and just correct it before it gets to another stage. Well, you know, you bring up an interesting point. If you, um, uh, if you have a health challenge and you'd like to address that challenge, then you have to consider the core competency of the people that you're going to. So if the core competency of the people you're going to is, um, you know, uh, butchery and drugs, then that's all they know, right? Right. It's not that they're necessarily bad people, although some doctors I've met I might classify bad and others good. Um, it's just that that's all they know. So, you know, you have to pick if you prefer to keep all your equipment, then for God's sake, stay away from the doctors. Better right. to find somebody who had your same symptom set and resolved it without, uh, you know, uh, drugs or surgery, without right. the pusher or the butcher. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So, David, for the benefit of the, our new meetup group, which is called Healthy to 100, I know there are several people that have signed up that may not have heard of David Favor. Um, David's an icon in the raw food industry. He's created his own line of, of superfoods, Sunfire superfoods that are amazing products. And uh, what, could you just give everybody just a little brief intro of how you got involved in raw foods, what brought you to the place you're at right now? Yes. So, the big challenge I had was when I was two, I uh, drank a bunch of gasoline. Um, you can read about how that happened uh, in my story, which is RadicalHealth.com slash story. And so, I drank gasoline, and in iridology, if you look at my eyes, uh, I have no assimilation ring, which is the ring between a person's pupil and iris that uh, typically denotes the quality of uh, nutritional assimilation a person has. In other words, conducting uh, component nutrients out of the intestinal tract through the intestinal wall into the fluid systems. And if you look in my eyes, I ain't got one. And I suspect that that got burned away when I drank gasoline. So the majority of my life um, has been spent or invested in coming up with foods which um, really nourish me and so the foods that i require are a little bit different quality or um, quality a little bit different uh, structure i guess than what other people uh, might require so i set out to come up with foods that were uh, very easy to uh, digest that required very little energy and were uh, pretty much in a pre-digested form. And so that took me through the whole transition into uh, uh, vegetarianism and then veganism and then raw food and now into superfoods. And I guess probably in the early 2000s, something like that, uh, Yamai and I, my wife, um, 
kind of went into the marketplace and started looking around for different uh, superfoods because the ones that were available were great and we had an intuition there might be something a little bit even more high octane that we could find so that's how we came up with the the uh, uh, radical health products and then that turned into the sunfire superfood brand which are the classics like chocolate bliss and vanilla agave and sunfire salt and fiesta mole which is one of my favorites and primal digest and the tocotrienols and so uh, pretty much if um, if you do have an assimilation ring, which you probably do, unless you suck down a bunch of gasoline when you were two, uh, then, you know, it's a big joke around here when people come in with health challenges and uh, to, to guess at the number of minutes before they start feeling better when they drink a glass of chocolate bliss. Because... Um, it's so easily assimilated that uh, the the nutrition starts hitting their tissue and cells, and you know usually a few seconds, and then starts to ramp up after a few minutes. And yeah, most people feel a, a big difference in a few minutes. So that's that's kind of where the um, the whole design of our superfood line came from. That's that's great. Yeah, they're delicious too. I mean, that's they're not just food that uh, you have to hold your nose and, and eat. It really is tasty stuff. Yeah. yeah so yeah, if you like, uh, if you love feeling good fast and forever, uh, you may love living on chocolate bliss. Because if it ain't <laughs> chocolate, is it really food? We couldn't agree more. Now, what what about folks that uh, are maybe raw food curious, but you know have this idea about it? Maybe some cult idea, or that it's too extreme. Um, you know, what, build the case for incorporating more raw food into an ordinary person's life as they are right now. Why should they? And well, I mean, the, really, the only person that is going to be served to uh, really upscale their health at all is somebody who is planning on on being around for a long time to make a contribution to themselves, life, and others, um, and you know, be able to do that in a comfortable sort of situation. So, you know, if you're somebody who's just, you know, hanging around in a minimum wage job clock in time until you die, then why bother? <laughs> so if, you, if, on the other hand, you'd like to, um, you know, operate at a, uh, a level of continuous peak energy, mood, and attitude for whatever reason you require, whether that's to have a better family life, better relationship with your uh, wife or kids or husband, or it's to produce more. A lot of internet marketers live off of uh, chocolate bliss because they get such a huge uh, uptick in their uh, uh, cognitive uh, function, their neurology comes up scale and operates a different way. And so, you know, if you if you make your living, especially by speaking and writing, then you know you're served to do things that optimize your time so you know if it's if i spend more than five or ten minutes in the kitchen in one day total it's a big day <laughs> right and most people you know and i talk to most people and if when they actually start figuring out the amount of time they spend for you know dealing with being hungry all the time and then you know all the money they spend on snacks and food and gasoline driving around to get snacks and food and then the time it takes to prepare foods and clean up or go to a restaurant and wait in line I mean usually people come out with two or three hours a day and so for me it's five or ten minutes I get to keep that two or three hours to develop content and so that goes into speaking or writing so Not to mention you. The, the really big win for uh, using raw foods is um, on the front end is you optimize your time and you optimize your creativity and cognitive facility. And on the back end, you know, it's like, um, uh, what was it, Vita, you came up with in the audio logo? Uh, open mic night is if you're serious about uh, never seeing a doctor again. Yeah. What was that? What was it? Yeah, if you're um, serious about... Uh being healthy um, and uh, don't want to see a doctor again, come and to yeah. my website. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, that's really, uh, that's the other thing too, is I mean, if, you, if you're a, um, if you're a person that somehow believes that your government and clergy and doctors and, you know, any of the other institutions that um, uh, supposedly know stuff, you know, if you feel comfortable giving over your power to them um, and being unresponsible, then you better run away screaming right now. 
if on the <laughs> other hand you believe that these guys they're not necessarily bad they only know what they know I mean you only know what you know you don't know what you don't know so if all you know is uh, drugs and knives as a doctor then that's all you know if, if the only tool in your toolbox is a hammer everything starts looking like a nail Right. And so uh, raw foods are really for people that are really uh, serious, uh, and I'd say even beyond commitment, they're driven to have the the uh, their best experience out of life, the highest quality life possible. So that's uh, that's who you know really uh, raw fooding and superfooding is designed for. That's great. And I think you touched on something, it, several things in there that, that we could expand on for hours, and we don't have that kind of time right now. But, but I did want to just briefly let you uh, introduce this concept that you introduced to us, cool. which has changed our life, which is finding your, I think you call it your divine purpose, <laughs> and how that is also important to your overall well-being and, and longevity. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. Uh, so uh, there are various terms people use. Um, I've started using calling here recently because divine purpose is a little bit uh, long to say. Uh, other people call it life purpose, divine blueprint, um, uh, you know, whatever your mission or motives are in life. And the simple way to determine what your calling is is you just figure out what you constantly uh, or continually retrace. In other words, there are common threads of conversation and activities that you're drawn to over and over again. And if you take a um, an inventory of all the retracements in your life, uh, conversations, activities, um, you know what you think about, and take all those and put them together and look at how they intersect and what the fusion of all those activities are, then you pretty much come up with what your calling is, and your calling is really uh, what your contribution is meant to be. Our potentially can be to yourself, life, and others. And to really be able to convert your calling into a format where people can ingest and enjoy forever, um, that's called a platform, which is uh, uh, the way a person um, communicates. And the, the way I describe platform is uh, what you say and how you say what you say and how long you say what you say. And so calling uh, becomes contribution through the vehicle of your platform. And again, that goes back to raw fooding and superfooding, is if you'd like to speak and write, you know, the best you can possibly, then you've got to have your brain and neurology and body, you know, running at continuous peak. Otherwise, you know, why bother? <laughs> so um, that's, um, uh, I, I've noticed that one of the, the big challenges that people have when they start down the, the superfood track, especially, is that they come uh, up face to face with how congruent they are with embodying and expressing their true calling and right. a lot of people kind of spin out because they're they you know they judge themselves to be so far off track and what i can say in the internet world now pff, yeah you can be on track in a matter of days <laughs> through the the uh, all the online mechanisms that are available today so um, I recommend that you you know steer clear of judging that you're off track. Uh, always consider that you're uh, that you're on track because you're having the internal conversation, and then you can uh, almost instantly uh, recover any time, even if it's been decades that you think you've been off track, just by um, uh, mastering a few rudimentary internet marketing technologies, which is kind of what we talk about uh, at the Inside Track Party meetups that we have. Right, which so, are excellent, by the way. And we'll, we'll announce that, too, at our meetup. And cool. I know you've got a lot of other calls, and we appreciate this short time. We get you for a whole hour, uh, at least in our, in our first meetup group, on September 3rd. So cool. uh, we'll save some of the juice for that. But so what, what exactly were you going to talk about uh, on, let's see, it's uh, Saturday, September the 3rd, 2011. What's, the, what's our topic yeah. for the evening? Well, since it's our inaugural launch of the meetup group, Healthy to 100, we thought you were the perfect person to sort of lay the blueprint, the foundation, you know, the first fundamental steps of what we should do if we want to achieve that, live healthy to 100. So I'm going to sort of leave it wide open for you to discuss that in any way that you see fit. How about, uh, how about changing your meetup event uh, to uh, 
healthy to 100 comma the easy way <laughs> the path of least resistance yeah so we'll we'll do healthy to 100 the easy way will be our our topic then that wonderful, sounds great wonderful thank cool. you so much for your time david all right thanks oh let's see and uh, you guys meet up if you search uh meet up for healthy dash 100 you'll find uh jim and vita's meet up and you can find uh, the group that I uh, manage at uh, Inside Track Party. Uh, you can just search on the internet or Inside Meetup, either one. Great. Cool. Okay. Great talking with you guys today. You too, Dan. Bye. Take care. <laughs>